Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 3, starting with verse 13. Let us listen together for God's word to us. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A little more than a year ago now, our homes became like arcs, right? There was a flood outside our homes, there was destruction and devastation, there was pain and upheaval and turmoil, and inside our little arcs there was some kind of protection. But it wasn't perfect inside the arcs, right? There was still fear and anxiety, there was grief, there was isolation, there was uncertainty, perhaps even despair. And if you have children, then your ark also had some of the sounds and the smells that would have made things very much like Noah's original ark. And so for all of this time that we have been living in the protection of our own arks, we've also been sending out ravens and doves, wondering if the waters of the flood have begun to recede. Each time we watch the news or read the news and we hope for a sign that the waters have begun to recede. That is us sending out those doves and ravens. Every time we talk to family or friends and we hope that they are safe and that they're healthy. Every time that we worship online and we feel the loss of fellowship and music and corporate prayer. And the olive leaf that we're waiting for is different. For each of us, right? Whatever that something is that signals to us that it's now safe to leave the ark or that that the, the destruction that's been going on outside is abating and the waters are receding. Maybe the CDC delivered your olive leaf a couple of weeks ago. Maybe for you it was when when you had your vaccine or maybe that second dose of your vaccine. Maybe your olive leaf came a long time ago. Maybe it still hasn't come yet. Maybe you're waiting for your children to be vaccinated. Maybe you don't know what you're waiting for and you still don't feel safe. We all know a little better than we would like, a little bit of what Noah probably experienced in that time that he spent on the ark. Noah was watching something old pass away and eagerly awaiting a new beginning. And the dove in the story of the ark is the messenger of that new beginning. The dove is a messenger of new life. So we know the story really well, but this is a scene we don't often dwell on. Noah had already done all the hard work. He built the ark. He had, he had endured the ridicule. He had shut the doors on the world and closed himself and his family in with all of the animals. And then it becomes a waiting game. Again, not all that unlike our experience throughout this pandemic. God never tells Noah how long he's going to be on the ark. God never tells Noah if he'll ever get off the ark. God didn't tell us how long this pandemic was going to last. Maybe it's good that we didn't know when it all got started. So Noah is waiting waiting for a sign that things are over. He sends out the raven, he sends out the dove, and the dove comes back with an olive leaf in its beak, proof that the waters are, in fact, receding. Proof that God's judgment is not the last word. 
Proof that destruction is not God's final purpose. Proof that life will again take root and flourish. Proof that God is faithful. The dove is a sign of all of this. The dove is a sign of comfort and assurance. The dove is a sign of hopeful promise for the future. And then in another notable scene, a scene that has nothing whatsoever to do with Noah, we have another dove, right? Jesus getting baptized by John. And here in this scene, we have an explicit connection between the dove and the Holy Spirit, a connection that doesn't exist in the story of Noah. Jesus is about to begin his ministry, and so he does what many Jews at the time are doing. He goes out to see John at the Jordan River to be baptized. And John protests and says, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should baptize me. But Jesus insists, and he is baptized. And when he comes up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus like a dove. The dove representing the Holy Spirit. The dove descends as a sign of God's presence. The dove demonstrates a special relationship between Jesus and God. Fitting for today, Trinity Sunday, we see in this scene the Trinity in early form, Father, Son, Holy Spirit present together. So over the last four weeks, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've looked at four, well, three, and today the fourth, different images or metaphors that Scripture uses to, to speak of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the Spirit as, as breath, the Spirit of God giving life in all its fullness to God's creatures. We talked about the Spirit as wind, a wind that stirs us up, that disturbs us, the Holy Ghost that haunts us and makes sure we never get too comfortable in the life of faith. And last week, the day of Pentecost, we talked about the Spirit of God as fire. Fire that uh, re-engineers the people of God to spread the good news without concern or care for boundaries or divisions. And so today we come to the fourth image, the image of the dove. And the dove is kind of the least obvious symbol for the Holy Spirit, except that in this scene of Jesus' baptism, we have that explicit connection. Otherwise, doves, they don't really show up much in Scripture. We have the story of Noah. And then, you know, we have stories about perhaps animal sacrifice or instructions for animal sacrifice that might include doves. But otherwise, it's not an obvious symbol for God's Spirit. Breath, wind, and fire, we have an intuitive sense about why these connect to the the mysterious movement of God's Spirit. But when we look at the dove in this scene of Jesus being baptized, when we look at the dove in the story of Noah, what we see is something about the Holy Spirit that we haven't really touched on yet. Something new that, uh, that the Spirit of God does in the life of faith that needs to be said. Sometimes we call it sanctification. Sometimes we call it Holiness, this work of the Holy Spirit in us, bringing us more and more into line with who God intends us to be. The way I like to speak of it is as new life, new creation. Flannery O'Connor in 1965 wrote a short story entitled Revelation. And I've shared an excerpt of this story with you before, but it was a long time ago and it's worth sharing again she tells the story of a woman named Ruby Turpin. Ruby is a middle-aged, white, southern woman. She's a decent woman. She thinks she's a good woman. One day, a young college girl back home from college in the north uh, gets into an argument with Ruby and shouts something nasty at her. She says, go back to hell where you came from, you old warthog. Now, Ruby couldn't understand how someone could say such a, a cruel thing to her, being that she's a good person, she's not a racist, she's kind. So she struggled to make sense of, of uh, this, this attack that, that she had uh, received, being the decent person that she is. That evening, as she's dwelling on this attack, she has a vision. And in her vision, and I'll quote, Ruby saw a vast swinging bridge extending upward from the earth through a field of living fire. 
Upon it, a vast horde of souls were rumbling toward heaven. There were whole companies of white trash, clean for the first time in their lives, and bands of black folks in white robes, and battalions of freaks and lunatics shouting and clapping and leaping like frogs. And bringing up the end of the procession was a tribe of people whom she recognized at once as those who, like herself, had always had a little of everything and the God-given wit to use it right. She leaned forward to observe them closely. They were marching behind the others with great dignity, accountable as they had always been for good order and common sense and respectable behavior. They alone were on key, yet she could see by their shocked and altered faces that even their virtues were being burned away. The dove returns to Noah as evidence that a new creation is underway, evidence that judgment has passed and that God promised a new future for humanity. The dove descends on Jesus as the embodiment of this new future. Jesus is the embodiment of the new creation. He's the one who lives the new creation that we struggle even to imagine. The dove reminds us that the Spirit of God is doing something new with us is working a new creation within us. And despite how good and decent we think we are, the dove reminds us that even our virtues, our so-called virtues, need to be burned away so that we can be remade, so that this world can be remade. We live in a time in which there is tremendous pressure to wear our virtues on our sleeves so to speak, to announce to the world through social media posts or shares or likes, through flags or stickers or hats, through the media that we consume, through the language that we use or don't use, there is pressure for us to use all of these uh, things as vehicles in order to announce our virtues to the world. And in a polarized environment, what that amounts to is announcing to the world what tribe we belong to, what team we are on. Some people call this virtue signaling. And I can't help but think of this as I read these words. Even their virtues were being burned away. The dove is the Holy Spirit's work of new creation. And this new creation, our sanctification, the transformation that the Holy Spirit is working in us is so big, it is so thorough that it burns through all of the hand-waving and the noise that it goes and it reaches below our so-called virtues. And it draws out of us that one virtue that doesn't care about image or reputation. It draws out of us that one virtue that ignores all of the distinctions that we like to make among people. It draws out of us that one virtue that defined the life and the ministry of Jesus. It draws out of us love. Love is the word after judgment. Love is the olive leaf. It is the new creation. It is the hopeful promise of God. Love is what is left when our virtues don't matter anymore. So let's signal that virtue instead. Let's wear love on our sleeve. In our living, let's show the world the kind of transformation that the Spirit of God is capable of, even in good and decent people like you and me. Let us pray. God, we invite your spirit into our lives, into our hearts as breath, as wind, as fire. And as the dove, which seems so gentle, yet turns us and this world upside down. Work your transformation in us. Burn away the virtues that don't matter and draw out of us love. Amen.